Let's get right into the word of God. Father, thank you for blessing this word. Thank you that I'm anointed to preach. Thank you that I'm anointed to open up the word of God in the lives of these people. I'm going to sit down. Thank you that I have ears that are open that will hear. Let there be understanding. And let the scripture, Lord, find entrance into every heart, into every spirit, and produce the fruit it's supposed to produce. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Right. We are busy with, you are no longer alienated. You are no longer aliens, but you share in the blessings of God. So this is part two that we're going to carry on with. All right. And uh, I'm just going to recap quickly. So we saw that uh, 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 in, in Mark, Jesus talks and he talks about the sower. The sower sows the word. And uh, the sower sows the word. The sower sows the word. Then in John 1, it says, In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word became flesh. It doesn't say that God became flesh. It says that the word became flesh. What was the word that became flesh? Mary, you will produce a child. And you will call his name Emmanuel. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Oh, but I'm, I'm not married. It doesn't matter. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. So the word became flesh. Put on flesh, Jesus Christ, okay. But there was word that was sown. Then in Matthew, uh, 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 you have the word in, in, in uh, uh, um, what was it? I think it was in Matthew 4, where it says in Matthew 4, uh, yeah, Matthew 4, where it says, Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that produce, that comes from the mouth of the Father. Man shall not live by bread only, but by every word. All right. So God even sows the word. God sows the word. God speaks the word. So the same principle applies to God. So if it works for God, it's got to work for me. The sower sows the word. So if God spoke, and the words that he spoke were seed, and the words produced... Now, you remember that we looked at it and uh, where it says that as long as this earth remains, seed time and harvest, not harvest time. I hear so many preachers misquoted where they say seed time and harvest time. No, no, no. Your harvest is not limited to time because the time is coming when the sower will overtake this, the, the reaper and the reaper will overtake the sower and you will not know whether you're sowing to reap or whether you're reaping because you've sowed because as you put your seed in, your harvest is already ready on the other side and you begin to harvest the, the seed that you've sown last year and you reap it and when your basket is full, the seed that you've sown now is already ripe for the... You get the picture. So it's a constant harvest. And, it, and it's in the Word. And it's in nature. You can check it in nature. I'm amazed at this new telescope. What is the, the Webb Alice Trophy that they've sent up? No. What is this? Tro the, the, the Webb? Something the Webb Telescope. Someone's name Webb. J.B. Webb or something like that. But this new telescope that they've sent up. Where God said, light be. And as they go into outer space, they can now see as far back as they can. They say it's at the beginning of time. All right? That is what they say, beginning of time. But the amazing thing is, is that they are still finding other galaxies, other stars. They are still finding that there's expansion in the universe going on. Why? Because it's God harvesting. God never said stop. He never said cease. He said light be. And light is still being formed. He said let there be stars. <laughs> stars are still being formed, family. Because it's harvest time. Because of the seed. Because of the word that God spoke. Now he has given us his word. John 17. Father, I have given them your word. And they receive. Not they have received the word. I have given them your word. And whatever, let me paraphrase that. And whatever the word says, they receive. So I have given them, them, your word. So what do we have? We have 
His word on the inside of us. So man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Father. So I want to say what God says. And when I say what God says, I create a harvest for myself. That is why I will rebuke you. I will correct you when you try to speak negative over my life. I'm not poor. I'm not lucky. I'm not trying to get. I am what the word of God says I am. All right? So then we were busy with Abraham. We looked at what did God say over Abraham? Because those words are seed. So God said to Abraham, your seed shall be as many as the stars. I don't want to go over that teaching again now. We'll do it another time again. All right? So I am, do, do you know, in the beginning God said to Adam and Eve, and this is what I say to God many times, you know, and uh, God spoke to Adam and Eve in the garden. God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Am I right? So now Adam and Eve came together. Now they started multiplying. Abel, Cain, Seth, and they carried on. And their children carried on. And their children carried on. And I said to God, you know what, Father? I am a product. Vili, Delport, is a product of words that God spoke in the beginning of time when he said to Adam and Eve, be fruitful and multiply. I didn't ask to be here. I am here because of a word that God spoke years ago. I am here because of what He said. So Lord, you have to take responsibility for my life. To feed me, to take care of me, to clothe me, to bless me. That's your responsibility. Because you spoke me into existence. And then you spoke after the flood and the stuff, uh, or, or, or before the flood, you, you spoke to, uh, 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 to, 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 uh, um, to, to Noah. And then Noah multiplied. And then there was Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And you said to Abraham, in your seed. So there's going to be seed. So I'm a product of God's words that he spoke. And even God said that my words will not return empty unto me. It will produce what I've sent it for. Amen. So I want to know what God said. Because then I know that those words will not return empty. It's going to produce what it says. So if he said to Abraham, I'm going to bless you, Abraham, and in you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, guess what? God's word will not return empty. And uh, man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that produces, that comes from the mouth of the Father. Guess what? I've got to be blessed. I can be nothing but blessed because the word says so. It has to produce a harvest. Then we went to, uh, uh, you, go, go to, go to, go to, go to, go to, go to Ephesians. This is where we stopped last Sunday. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. So, then we looked at Deuteronomy. I'm just recapping because this is very important. And I've got eternity to preach this, so I'm in no hurry to finish anything. If it gets too hot to stuff it, tell me. We can switch the thing off, okay? Is it Okay. All right. So then we went to Deuteronomy 7, and we looked at what the scripture says where God blessed Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and uh, the fathers, your fathers. And then in Deut we looked at Deuteronomy 28. Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the country. These are God's words. Moses is speaking what God said. Blessed shall you be. Moses tell the people. These are confirmations of the blessings that were spoken out over Abraham. Amen. These are not new blessings because in Deuteronomy, God says, what I've spoken to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So when God says, oh, Blessed shall you be in the city. Blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall you be coming in. Blessed shall you be going out. These are part of the blessings of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right? So now, go to Ephesians chapter 1. 
Let's see how far we come to this morning. Verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are in... Now, I like to make my Bible personal, and you're going to see it a little bit later on. I like to make my Bible personal. To the saints who are in Ephesus. But now, Vili, a prophet of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Portable, who are in Mosul Bay, who are part of KLSM. I wrote it in my Bible. There, I wrote it like that in my Bible. There it is. Part of KLSM, of Kingdom Lifestyle Ministries, because I'm not appointed to everybody, because not everybody will receive me. All right? Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Having predestined us, this is now going to get good, having predestined us to adoption as sons. Now, I want you to mark that little word in your Bible, sons. Ring around it. Draw a ring around it, a circle around it, underline it. Adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him, verse 7, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence. Now you remember prudence is a mental picture, a mental action. In other words, you change your mind. That is what repent means. It means to change your thinking. Doesn't mean name all your sins or you've got to repent of your sins. Oh, Father, now I repent of this and I repent of that. Uh, what else is there? Mm, no, it just means you've got to change your mind about your actions. Having made known to us, verse 9, the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure. So now we've got to find out what is the mystery of His will which is his pleasure. Which is his pleasure. Let's carry on reading. Which he purposed in himself. Now here comes the purpose. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times. He might gather together in one. All things in Christ. You remember my demonstration? Yes, Christ. Yes, everything that is in heaven. Yes, everything that's on the earth. And now everything that is in heaven, in other words, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven there's no sickness. In heaven there's no disease. In heaven there's no lack. In heaven there's no poverty. In heaven there's, there's every provision that you need, your healings, the, uh, your health, everything. And on earth, the gold, the silver, everything that is in heaven and everything that is on earth has now come together in Christ Jesus. So now I am in Christ. So guess where is everything? On the inside of me. So man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. Father, I have given them your words. It's on the inside. It's not just on top. It's on the inside. It's on the inside. Now everything has come together in Christ. Now, if I am in Christ, everything that came together in Christ is on the inside of me. Whatever is in heaven is in me. Whatever I need on earth is on the inside of me. So now I declare it. I speak it. Because this word will not return void. Because I'm speaking His word and His word will not return empty. So I've got to find out what did God say so that I can say what God says. And whatever God said must respond to the word of God. It must respond to the word of God. Verse 11. In him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose. 
Go back to verse 10. That in the dispensations, dispensation of the fullness of the times. Quickly go to Galatians 4. Now you, you know chapter 4 of Galatians where it says now that the heir, as long as he's a child, he doesn't differ from a slave. All right. But verse 4. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son. Remember what I said about son. So when the fullness of the time had come, you stay in Galatians. I'm just going to jump between the pages. Ephesians. That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Now when the fullness of the time had come, God set forth his son. So everything is now together in Christ. It's the fullness. The time isn't going to come. It came in Christ. Born of a woman, Galatians, born of a woman under the law to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. This is going to get good. As sons. And because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of His Son into our hearts. Ephesians. Just listen. Okay, let's just go back to Galatians. So He purposed in Himself, prudence having made known to us the mystery of His goodwill to His pleasure, which he purposed in himself that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together all in one which are in heaven, which are on earth, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trust in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Go back to Galatians. And because you are sons, verse 6, 4 verse 6, God has sent forth the spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, therefore you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Now I'm just going to quote the scripture. In, in, you can write the scripture, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 8. I think it is. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 8. Let me read it. Listen what 1 Corinthians 2 verse 8 says. But we speak the wisdom, verse 7, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Now remember what he said in Ephesians, he's going to reveal to us the mystery. What is the purpose? God is the mystery the hidden wisdom, the hidden mystery, which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For had they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Had they known, listen now, it's, I'm going to explain this to you. Had they known what was going to come in the fullness of time with Christ, they would not have crucified Him. Why would they not have crucified Him? Because of Galatians 3. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So if they knew what was going to happen, they would not have crucified the sons of glory. But cursed is he who hangs on a tree, so that the blessings of Abraham can now come upon the Gentiles. So if they knew that the Gentiles are going to get the blessings of Abraham, they would not have crucified him. Because the spirits in the spirit will, all the other stuff in it, what does it say? 
Ah, man. The rulers of this age, if they knew, they would not have crucified him. Ooh. Imagine what would have happened if Jesus wasn't crucified. No blessings of Abraham. You see, we've, we've got the crucifixion only limited to so that you don't go to hell. So that you are saved. Your sins are washed away. We limit the blood of Jesus Christ to just having our sins washed away. There's more to it. He became a curse so that we no longer are under the curse. The curse is still out there. The law is still out Oh, people don't like to hear this. The law is still out there. It's still operating. The curse is still out there. It's still operating. The difference is we are no longer under the curse and we are no longer redeemed by the law, but by the blood of Jesus Christ. But if we don't understand it, the law will keep us in bondage and have us live under a curse. If you don't obey the word of God, the curse still works. But I don't fear the curse if I walk in obedience to the word of God. Part of the curse is lack of poverty. There are still poor people out there. So in other words, they're under a curse. Sickness, disease is a curse. There are still sick people today, so they are under the curse. But I have been redeemed. If we can understand this, if we can grasp this, if we can lay hold of the power of the words that God has given us as sons and daughters of Almighty God, and we can walk in prudence, in other words, in the, in the renewing of our minds, our minds in action, our words in action, you can understand that you have the authority, you have the power to say, healed in Jesus' name, not in this body. I command every virus to die the stomach Buck, the coughing buck, the whatever buck, the lady buck, whatever buck is on the inside. I command it to die in Jesus' name. I command my body to line up with the plan, purpose, and the will of Almighty God. You might not feel better immediately, but your spirit might, be, might feel better. And then you keep on declaring it. And where it would have taken you two days, three, four days in it to, to, to have the healing manifested. Man, in four or five hours, you begin to feel better. Why? Because you keep on addressing your body. And his words will not return empty. So you command your body to line up with the plan and the purpose of God's will for your life. The same with lack and, and poverty and other stuff and... We've got to get this. Because if you knew it, you would be doing it. That's why you need the teachings over and over. So that you can, be, not to put you under condemnation, but to get you to a higher level of life. Come on, family. Hmm? If they knew, they would not have crucified him. By his stripes, you were healed. Not are going to be. You were healed. Now, I, I, I've searched the scriptures. I can find no scripture in the Bible that suggests that Jesus was ever sick. No scripture. Does it mean that I will never get sick? We're not supposed to. Because everything in heaven and everything on earth is now cons consummated, has now come together, has been united in Christ Jesus. And now I am in Christ. And if I am in Christ, then everything that he has is mine. I'm a son. I'm an heir. I have an inheritance. And healing is part of my inheritance. But most of the people are waiting for the pastor. The scripture does say, it does say, if they are sick among you, get the elders, let them anoint you with oil, let them lay hands upon you. But when you begin to understand your maturity in Christ, you can fulfill that very function yourself in your home. Take some oil. If you don't have oil, contact me, I'll send you some. Mix your own oil. You can even use fish oil. 
I don't have any other oil, but my, I have some oil that my wife baked some fish in it. Something might smell fishy, but it's not what the, the magic is not in the oil. The anointing is not just in the oil. It is in what the oil represents. But at least we've got oil. Here's my oil. At least this church has got oil that, have, that doesn't smell fishy. Oh, man, it's got all the spices in that you can find in the Bible that God spoke to Moses. Mix it with the biblical spices. Cinnamon. Frankincense. Mmm, man, what's that other one? There's one from Iran. You don't get it anymore because the trees have been destroyed, so you don't get that anymore. And if you do get it, it's so expensive. Oh, man. So at least you're going to smell nice. And I pray over it. I pray over it. Amen. Let's carry on. And then he carries on in Corinthians. He says, if they knew they would not have crucified him. So that the blessings of Abraham, they wanted to stop the blessings of Abraham. Now, I don't want to even, go, no, I don't want to even read that one because then we're going to get stuck there. Eye has not seen and ear has not heard. So let's go back to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1. Let's read verse, I want to write, go to the Amplified with that one. Go to Galatians. Stay in, keep your fingers in Ephesians. I'm going to read that scripture in Ephesians again, and then we're going to go to Galatians. You get Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and then Galatians. I'm going to read Ephesians. Listen what Ephesians says. He gathered together in all one in one all things in Christ, which are in heaven and which are on earth in him, and in him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things to the counsel of his will. Now listen to Galatians 1. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. It says basically the same thing, but just nicer. Galatians 1 verse 19. For it has pleased the Father. That all the divine fullness, the sum total of the divine perfection, powers, and attributes should dwell in him permanently. And God purposed that through, by the service, the intervention of him, of Christ, the Son, all things should be completely reconciled back to himself, whether on earth or in heaven, as through him the Father made peace by means of the blood of his cross. And although you at one time, now here we go, although you at one time were estranged and alienated from him, and were of hostile attitude of mind in your wicked activities, Yet now has Christ the Messiah reconciled you to God in the body of his flesh through death in order to present you holy, faultless, and irreproachable in his, the Father's presence. And this he will do provided that you continue to stay. Listen, this he will do provided that you will continue to stay with and in the faith. You've got to keep on believing. You've got to keep on exercising your faith in Christ. Well grounded. This is why I preach this stuff over and over again. I want you to be grounded. No, I want you to be well grounded. That you are not tossed to and fro by to and fro. Even throw. 
that you are not tossed to and fro. You are not thrown here and thrown there. You are not tossed hither and thither. Hither and thither. Hello? I want you to be well grounded in the word of God. Settled and steadfast, not shifting or moving away from the hope which rests on and is inspired by the glad tidings, the gospel which you heard and which has been preached as being designed for and offered without restrictions to every person under heaven of which gospel I, Paul, became a minister. Mm. I wrote in my Bible, this gospel of which I really became a minister. Verse 26, I mean Colossians. The mystery of which was hidden for ages and generations from angels and men, but is now revealed to his holy people to whom God was pleased to make known. Now I hope you're going to understand this and get this now. How grateful the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ within and among you. The old translation will say Christ in you. The hope of glory. Him we preach. This is the mystery. What is the mystery? Christ in you. Who is Christ? He is the word that became flesh. So on the inside, I'm carrying Christ. What is that? The anointed word. And it's the anointing that destroys the yoke and removes burdens. So on the inside of my, this me, this is the mystery. I carry the anointed word called Christ Jesus. And if they knew, they would not have crucified him. Because his word will not return empty. It will produce what he sent it for. And man shall not live by bread only, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Father. So when I declare what God says, get what? It will not return empty. It must produce what I've declared and what I've spoken. So I will not be moved according to the Amplified. I will not. I will continue to stay with and in the faith. Well grounded. And settled in the truth. And in the gospel. I'm grounded in this gospel. Paul writes and he says, nothing moves me. I mean, man, you get stoned. He says, that doesn't move me. They tell him to be quiet. He says, it doesn't move me. They tell him, stop preaching. He says, that doesn't move me. They said, we're going to kill you. He says, that doesn't move me. He says, I count all things done. I call it bull done. All things. I will know nothing except, oh man. Now will you understand the scripture where Paul says, I will know nothing except Christ and him crucified. Because if they knew, they would not have crucified the, 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 the Lord of glory. They would not have crucified him. If they knew, if they knew that the blessings of Abraham is going to come upon the Gentiles and that he's going to reconcile everything that is in heaven and everything that's on this earth together in Christ and that you and I are going to be in Christ. Ooh, man, imagine all the powerhouses, the dynamite stuff, the sons of God, the little gods that are walking around on this earth, speaking, declaring the word of God. That's why the devil is trying his utmost to destroy the church and the children of God, the sons of God. He's trying to do everything, but he's failing miserably. He tried it with the COVID, but the church started opening up its mouth and voices and said, no more, no more. Now they're coming with two other stuff, global warming and monkeypox. Now monkeypox have been declared as a natural disaster. With five people in South Africa having monkeypox, it's a national disaster. It's a worldwide disease now. Fear. Fear. 
They are trying everything to bring it down so that they can close the meetings. Because their targets are the churches. I was watching the thing the other day that someone shared, which was actually awesome. A few years ago, it was in the, I think it was in the beginning of the 2000s or the end of the 1900, 1990, 1992. They had a chart of the weather over Europe where the weather was in the 40s. And the, 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 the map of your, you know, like they do the, 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 the weather on, 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 on SABC also. And uh, so now the weather, the weather map, the weather chart is the normal colors, green, whatever the colors. And in England, in London, it's 36 degrees. And in France, it's 32 degrees or whatever. It was just amazing when I saw this. Now suddenly, those temperatures were higher than the temperatures that they're having now. Now, when they show you the map, every map of Europe is red. Go and check it. Every map is red. This is the hottest it's ever been. 39 degrees. It's summer. Go to Portable. In summer, in February. This very same Andre that I gave you the testimony about when he still lived in portable in his house. He had a thermometer under a tree that's just next to his swimming pool. And the highest that was recorded while we were living in portable was at one day it was 52 between 49 and 52 degrees in February. You don't know what hot is. You don't know what climate change is. <laughs> Did you know that the earth goes through these climate changes? It's, it's a cycle on the earth. This is nothing new. But they've got to use something to influence the minds of people so that they can instill fear, so that they can get their agendas going, because the devil knows his days are counted. His days are up. Not one day. It is up the moment that Jesus died on the cross, because the word says that when Jesus came, he destroyed the works of the devil on the cross Amen. of when he was born. When Jesus was born, he destroyed the works of the devil. Amen. And when he was crucified, the Bible says he destroyed him who had the power. <coughs> so he's got to try and do something so that people can think he still has power. He's got no power. Wake up, church. You are the church. Wake up, saints. Come on. There where you are. If you are in a meeting this morning or even if you are at home, not your husband, not your wife. If you don't have anybody next to you, not yourself. Don't look like a chicken. And just say, wake up. Wake up. We have the authority. That's why the Lord spoke to me a cup. A few years ago, the Lord already spoke to me about this. But two weeks ago, this thing came up in my two, three weeks ago. It was like an urgency in my spirit. There are too many noises. Too many noises. Churches are making too many noises. And very few churches have become a voice. Have become a voice. What is the voice? John the Baptist was a voice in the wilderness. And what did he announce? He said, prepare the way for the Lord. Prepare the way for the Lord. Prepare the way for the Lord. Repent. Change your mind. Change your thinking. Get the way of the Lord is ready. 
I'm not just talking about when Jesus comes back. I'm talking about it's time to get the way ready for God to manifest His glory, manifest His power, manifest His anointing. It's time for signs, wonders, healings, and miracles. We cannot keep on declaring it in the church. Now I want to stand up and run. We cannot keep on declaring signs, wonders, miracles, and healings, but we don't believe it. We don't lay hands upon the sick. We don't confess it. We don't declare it over our own lives. You can declare that healing miracle over your life I'm not denying the facts that people get sick I don't deny the facts but as we grow spiritually we should become less and less and less if you need healing in your body don't declare it just once keep on declaring it until you see it manifesting even for creative miracles. Say, God, I need a creative miracle in Jesus' name. Run. My heart, touch my heart, creating me a new heart. My ear, create, create a new eardrum. And you keep on declaring it. Something has got to change. Otherwise, all these other negative stuff with the, with the climate change, these are the two things that they're going to use plagues and climate change. Because with that, they can shut down the church. Nobody's allowed to go church, to church anymore now or to places to go and eat. And their whole idea is the church. Hear me. Their whole focus is the church. Because now you're going to, now you're going to get monkeypox. I wonder what's going to be next. It's monkeypox, it's chickenpox, bird flu. They're going to invent something called turkey disease too. Maybe it's when this thing starts growing like a goiter, you know. <laughs> turkey disease and, and swine flu. <laughs> yeah. Some people sound like swine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Huh? Come on, family. Let's carry on. Now let's go to chapter 2. No, no, no. Let's carry on with Ephesians 1. Let's carry on with Ephesians 1. Verse 13. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation, in whom also having believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praises of His glory. Jump down to verse 19. And that is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe, according to the working of His mighty power. According to the working of His mighty power. It's time for the working of His mighty power. I've been walking around with a song this whole week. I didn't hear it. I, and nobody was playing it on, on any media platform, on my computer or whatever. This song just came up in my spirit and I've been singing it and I've been, 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 been uh, 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 what do you call it? <clears throat> Humming it or whatever. And I've been, I, it's been in my spirit and in my mind this whole week. And this morning I actually got it from the internet and I said to my sons, get it ready. We're going to play it at the end of the service. It's such a simple song, but with a powerful message. Just a few words, but let's carry on, let's carry on. Verse 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power toward us who believe according to the working of His mighty power? which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which to come. He is seated far above every principality and every power and might and dominion. He is seated above Fuji. He's seated above Soros. He's seated above Bill Gates. He's seated above 
all corruption. He's seated above all powers. He's seated above the guys that's trying to get the climate change thing to make it a crisis. Do you want to tell me that there's no climate change crisis? No, there might be. But they're making it more than what it is. Do we have to take care of the earth? Yes, God has given us responsibility to take care of it. But the power-hungry conglomerates are stripping the Amazon. They are cutting down trees left and right, which is the lungs of this earth, producing oxygen. So of course there's going to be consequences. Hmm? People just wanting to make money, so they, so they pollute the rivers. They just want to make money. They don't care what they do with the environment. Of course there's consequences. And the church needs to wake up. The sons and daughters of God need to wake up. And we need to begin to address this stuff. We cannot just let, like there's an Afrikaan saying, let God's water over God's acker loop. We cannot just sit with flaps on our eyes and, no, faith without works. Prayer alone is not going to change it, people. We cannot just keep on praying, praying, praying. We've got to put action to our prayers. God, I need you to take care of my needs. What action? Put seed in the ground. Word seed, financial seed. Because whatsoever a man sows, that is what he will reap. Need a financial breakthrough? Sow in the time of drought. Now people arguing about whether tithing is biblical or whether it's not biblical. <laughs> Obedience. I would rather obey the word and trust the word of God. Whatsoever a man sows, that is what he will reap. We have to wake up. We have to wake up. And we have to take care of what God has placed us over. He's placed us over this earth. Rule and reign over it. Subdue it. We have to lift our voices. We've got to trust God to raise. Not everybody is called as preachers. Come on. Not everybody is called as preachers. But God can call you as a son of God, filled with the spirit of God, to get involved in the environment. Where your voice can be heard, where you can make it, bring a change, where you can have an impact because of the authority of God's word that you carry. We need godly people, sons of God, that's got an anointing upon them for business. You've got to prosper in business. Other businesses must see the prosperity in your business. And begin to envy you because your business is prospering in the midst of a pandemic when their businesses are closing. And they must come to you and say, what is the key? Whether they like the answer or not. My key is tithes and offerings. Oh no, I don't believe in that. That's why, and how is that working out for your business? You asked me why my business is successful. Now I'm telling you, now you don't want to receive it. Suffer, buti. I have the answer. I've got the key. We've got the answer for the environment. We've got the answer for businesses. We've got the answer for jobs. We've got, we've got the answer. We need to trust God to raise up the people to go and fill those positions. Politics. We need godly politicians. You can spread the gospel while you're a politician. You don't have to be a pastor of a church. But you can belong to a church that can support you through prayer. And through teaching you the word. And applying the word. And prophesying over you. How you should govern the municipality. How you should govern the, 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 the province. How... Okay. Let's get back. Verse 22 of, of Ephesians 1. And he put all under his feet. The King James would say all things. All things isn't in the original. He placed all under his feet. Everything is under his feet. 
and gave him as head over all. To the church. To the church. He's the head of the church. Come on, say this with me. If he's the head of the church and I make out the church, then there should be signs, wonders, miracles, healings, powerful manifestations <coughs> through me. Which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all in all. Which is us. Which is us. What has that got to do with Abraham and with the word? And us being alienated. That you ask. Chapter 2. Okay, if I'm going to start with verse 1, we're going to carry on until daylight tomorrow morning. Go right down to verse 6. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Ephesians 1, verse, 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 verse 20, verse 20. I want to connect it to verse 20. Which he worked in Christ, his mighty power, which he worked in Christ, when he raised him from the dead, I mean, Ephesians 1, verse 20. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality, power, and might, and dominion. He seated him far above. Chapter 2, verse 6. And raised us up together. And raised us up together. And made us sit together in heavenly places, which is far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which to come. Raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places far above. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ. Verse 10, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. The Amplified said, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. The good life. The good life. Come on, we're going to make some declarations this morning. Say this with me. Say, this is his purpose. This is the mystery that I have been raised up and I'm seated with him so that I can live the good life that he prearranged and purposed for me to live. Verse 11, therefore remember that you once Gentiles, now here we come to the message, in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. You were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. You were separated. I'm going to spend some time on this one. You were separated from the commonwealth from the common wealth of Israel. Abraham, I'm going to bless you. And in you all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. I'm going to bless your children. That's my promise to you. And Abraham was very rich in livestock, in cattle in gold, and in silver. Then Isaac was born. Here comes the harvest of the words. How is it possible Sarah will become pregnant again? 
I'm a hundred, she's ninety. My words will not return empty. So here Isaac is born. And because of the word that God spoke to his father, Abraham, he sowed in the time of drought and reaped a hundredfold in the time of drought. And the Philistines and his enemies saw the glory of God upon his life and they envied him. Then Jacob was born. I'm going somewhere. Then Jacob was born. Jacob, deceiver. Now God had a promise, made a promise with Abraham. So here's Jacob. Working for Laban. Somewhere, the words have to produce a harvest. Something was triggered in the heart of, Ab of Jacob. The sticks. And he became so wealthy that the sons of Laban came to Jacob and said to him, you have taken our father's glory, our father's wealth. You took our father's wealth. Go. So he took the wealth and he left. And he got to a place, Benil, where he wrestled with God and God changed his name from deceiver to prince, Israel. And Abraham became very prosperous and blessed. And you were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. Out of Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, came the nation Israel. Are you with me? Go and check out how prosperous the nation Israel is. Go and check out the Jew. Circumcised, uncircumcised. Know that the Messiah came waiting for the Messiah because of words that were spoken. Because of words that were spoken. A Jew will start a business where every other business has failed and be prosperous. It's like this one Jew had a cafe. And then two companies bought out the lots between him. He wouldn't sell. So they bought the two lots between him or next to him. And they built two huge supermarkets. And now you can be afraid that you're going to lose business because you've got this little cafe. So all that he did is, is he placed a big sign on top and said entrance. <laughs> and people would walk into the shop and then, okay, you've got what we need and buy what they need. So he was still prosperous. That's a Jew. Why? Because of the blessings that God spoke. So God said there was a time when you were alienated from the commonwealth. Wealth was so common, everyone had it in common. <coughs> Joseph. It might seem like Joseph lost everything when he was tossed into the well. Then he was appointed as second in command. In other words, he was appointed the vice president of Egypt. Second to Pharaoh. And God provided so that his father and his brothers could move from drought to Egypt and be prosperous and be blessed. The very place that they once were in bondage. In Exodus. Who God can take your place of bondage. And change it into a place of prosperity, man. I'm preaching to myself. God can take you back to the place of bondage. And you will see that this has become my place of prosperity. My place of blessings. My place of provision. 
Why? Because of the word. Because of the word. Those words are now fulfilled in Christ, family. And we carry that very word on the inside of us. So stop declaring and saying, I don't know how I'm going to make it. No, you're not just going to make it, you're going to flourish. You're going to prosper. You're going to get over this thing and your enemies are going to see you and they will envy you in Jesus' name. Come on, let's carry on reading. So you were with, verse, verse 12, that in that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world, but now in Christ Jesus, who were once far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. This is what God has promised to Abraham. Jacob now becomes Israel. Now I'm no longer an alien. I'm no longer alienated from the wealth. Of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The cross of Jesus Christ has reconciled everything together in Christ. So on, in Christ now, I carry all the blessings of Abraham according to Galatians chapter 3. I carry all the promises that God made to Abraham. Whether they are promises, whether they are covenants, whether it's a testament. On the inside, I carry a promise, I carry a covenant, I carry a testament. It's all on the inside of me. So whether it's a promise, whether it's a covenant, whether it's a testament, I have the blessings of God in me, on me. So wherever I go, the blessings go. I carry it. I don't leave it at home. So we were brought close by the blood of Jesus. Jump down to verse 19. Now therefore, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. I'm going to read it again. Now therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Verse chapter 3. Jump down to verse 5. Which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men. See, there we go again. It wasn't made known to the sons of men. But now we have, we know what is the purpose and the mystery that is made, been made known to the sons. As it has now been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ through the gospel. So if I don't preach the gospel of prosperity, if I don't preach the gospel of blessings, if I don't preach the gospel of promises, if I don't preach the gospel that was presented to Abraham through Melchizedek, if I don't preach that gospel, you will not be able to hear it and you will be alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. So I have to preach this gospel. But which I became, of which I became a minister, according to the gift of the grace of God given to me. Now this is Paul. According to the gift of the grace God give, has given to me by the effective working of His power. Now listen, listen, listen. My gift, my gift is to teach on God's prosperity. That's my gift. Is to preach on God's prosperity and on the blessings. So he says that according to the gospel, which is the gift that God called me as a minister, and this is the grace that's been given to me by the effective working of his power. My gift, and I'm not arrogant when I say this, I'm not prideful when I say this, I'm acknowledging the gift. Because there was a time when God said to me, go and teach my people how to prosper. That was in 1995, 96. 
God said, go and teach my people how to prosper. In the midst of a crisis, in the midst of having no income, no money, so deep in debt, no church to preach to, when we decided to go with the prophetic anointing that God has called us for, every colleague of mine that was in the denomination turned their backs on me. I had invitations, I think I had about three or four invitations to go and preach in different churches. But the moment that I decided to leave the church, suddenly, according to them, the anointing left me. Now I have fallen back. I have fallen off the rock. And they all canceled their invitations. Nothing has changed. I'm just going in the direction as with the prophetic that God has called me for. But everybody turned their backs on us. And here we find ourselves all alone, no income, no salary, no nothing. And God says, but this is what I called you for, to be a prophet to the nations, built upon the apostles and the prophets. We are not laying any new foundations. We are exposing the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. That's what we do. So I'm not laying new foundation. I'm opening the foundation so that you can see how solid and strong the foundation is that you have built on. Because once more I will shake, so that that which cannot be shaken shall remain. So what is the gift and the anointing that's the grace of God upon my life? Go and teach my people how to prosper. And the grace of prosperity and blessings, family, is upon my life. Verse 8, to me who am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given that I, Vili, I've made it personal in my Bible, that I, Vili, should preach among the Gentiles, you, the church, the unsearchable riches of Christ. To me, though I am very least of all the saints, God's consecrated people, this grace, favor, privilege, was granted and graciously entrusted to proclaim to the Gentiles the unending. The unending. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Get this. That's the grace that's upon my life. That's the grace that's upon my life. That's the gift upon my life. To open the foundations so that you can see the blessings of God that was spoken. Go and teach my people how to prosper. The gracious entrusted to proclaim to the Gentiles the unending, the boundless, the fathomless, the incalculable, the and exhaustless riches of Christ, wealth which no human being could have searched out. 1 Corinthians, what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, or even come up in the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. But he has revealed it unto us. This is the gift and the grace that's upon my life, is to open the foundations, to open your spiritual eyes, so that you can see what is being revealed to you, what kind of a life you can have. Because if they knew, they would not have crucified him. Because they knew they was in the spirit realm, the demons and the devils knew what was going to come, what was going to happen. That's why they tried to destroy the babies. They just didn't know through whom it was going to be. That's why they tried to destroy Moses, because they thought that it's Moses, the baby. Then they tried to destroy the babies in Jesus' time. So they tried to kill him, but they could not kill him. So that the blessings of Abraham can come upon the Gentiles. So we are no longer alienated from this commonwealth. 
That's why I teach you, declare it. Speak it over your life. Even in the midst of lack and poverty, you declare, I'm prosperous, I'm blessed, my needs are taken care of. In the midst of drought, you sow. In the midst of drought, you put a seed in the ground. Whether it's a financial seed, even in the midst of the drought of the Word of God. You know, sometimes you get to a place where you're just tired. But in the midst of that drought, you speak the word. You put a seed in the ground because God's word is seed. And what will happen? What, what does the word say? It says, Ooh. The boundless, the unending, the fathomless, the incalculable. In other words, there's no calculator. Exhaustless. It's got no exhaust. No, that's not what it means. It means you cannot exhaust the blessings of God in your life. You cannot eat pitney. The more you give, the more God has. That's available. We've got to believe this. I, 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 I love this. This, this. this stuck with me. This, uh, 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 we, we, we're nearly done. I, I've got to, I can't finish now. I've got to finish when I'm finished. This stuck with me. Something that Jesse Duplante said. Now, this might sound wrong to you. Because the word says that We've got to believe. He says, but I don't believe anymore. He says, I don't believe anymore. Now, if you just listen to that, you're going to go, what? <laughs> How can you say you don't believe anymore? He says, I don't believe anymore. Now, I know. And for a moment, I thought, Moving from believing to knowing. I don't believe God is going to do it. I now know He will do it. Man, that hit me. I said, wow. Opening up a foundation. Shaking off the dust. So that you can see the foundation of moving from believing to knowing. Now I know that I know. And you know that I have said this so many times. That there's a knower on the inside. You know that you know that you know that you know what you know. What do you know? You know that you know that you know. That you know that you know that God will do what he promised. You know that God's going to do what you declare. You've got to know that God. That's the level of life. That's the higher level. It's not a season. It's a higher level of maturity. A higher level of life. Knowing who you are in Christ. That's not for special people. It's not for pastors. It's not for the prophets. It's not for the apostles only. It's for every believer who understands I am in Christ. That is why I became a preacher of this gospel. A minister of this gospel. Just like Paul. Let me finish. Ephesians 3, verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise through Christ, uh, through the gospel of which I became a minister, according to the gift of the grace God given to me by the effective working of his power. Verse 8, to me who I am less than the least of all the saints, this grace was given to Vili, should preach among, that I, Vili, should preach among the Gentiles, that's you, the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all see, and to make all see. And to make all of you see. And to make all of you see. You see? And to make all of you see. I want to see what the Amplified says. Okay, let's get on. What is the fellowship of the mystery... 
which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God, who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places according to the eternal purpose which he accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. So we've got to be, we, we, we have to make known. We have to manifest to the powers and to the principalities and to the wickedness in the air. We have to, the church, we have to make it known to them. The riches of his glory. Let me finish with that. Having said that, go back to Deuteronomy. This is where we're going to end. Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Now in my new Bible, I did something this week. I took the pics. I did not... I, were, I was accused. <laughs> this is because of the lack of knowledge. Years ago, I'm going to get up now. Because we're going to conclude now. Years ago, when we just came to Marshall Bay, there were spies that came and checked us out when we were in the... Uh, Hotel. And uh, I was teaching on something and I went to the book of Revelation where it says that this is a revelation of Jesus Christ. It doesn't say this is a revelation of the Antichrist. It says this is a revelation of Jesus Christ. And it's, it's, it stands so in the Bible. It's what it says in the Bible. So, I explained that this is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Who did they get onto WhatsApp groups and stuff, and on Facebook, and accused me of changing the Bible. Willie really changes the Bible to suit his doctrine. Oh, and they warned everybody not to come to my church, because, you know, I changed the scriptures. And I said, where do I change the scriptures? It's in your Bible. It's in your Bible. Let me just show it to you. Then we go to Deuteronomy. Do you have the same Bible that what I have? I said, let's read it. The heading. The revelation of Jesus Christ. It doesn't say the revelation by Jesus to John. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants. So Jesus is now being revealed to John. I'm saying this so that you can know what I did in my Bible in Deuteronomy 28. So now this has been fulfilled. The blessings of Abraham fulfilled in Christ. Hung on a cross, he cried out, he said it's done, it's finished. It's accomplished. The words shall not return empty. Father, I have given them your words. So I'm no longer alienated from the commonwealth that was in Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'm no longer alienated. He's not talking spiritual. He's talking about the commonwealth. The blessings of Abraham. So Deuteronomy, Moses these are the blessings of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that I spoke to them, being revealed to you again. Deuteronomy 28. Blessed shall you be in the city, blessed shall you be in the country. So, let me read it to you now, being fulfilled. So I made it personal. Not corporate, personal. This is how it starts off. Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently, am I right? She loves that what it says. Now it shall come to pass. Is that what your Bible says? But now it's fulfilled in Christ. The words that were spoken will not return empty. I'm revealing it to my sons. So let me just throw this in quickly. So Isaiah says, so 
command me. Let me just read it. Isaiah 45. Ask me things to come concerning my sons. And concerning the work of my hands, you command me. And how many times have we read about sons, sons, sons? In Galatians and in Ephesians. We are sons, we are sons. So now he says, ask me things to come concerning my sons. So now I'm going to ask him. Ask and you shall receive. But now it's done, it's fulfilled. So now let's read it. Now, it has come to pass. As I diligently obey the voice of the Lord my God, to observe carefully all His commandments, which was and are commanded to me today. That the Lord my God has set me high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings has come upon me. You can even put the is upon me. Has come upon me. And is overtaking me. Come on, if you go and read one Galatians, uh, Galatians chapter 1. <coughs> Exhaustible. Unexhaustible. And is overtaking me. Because I obey the voice of the Lord my God. Blessed am I in the city. Blessed am I in the country. Blessed is the fruit of my body, the produce of my ground, and the increase of my herds, the increase of my cattle, the offspring of my flock. That's representing my stuff. What I own. Verse 5. Blessed are my basket and my needy bowl. <coughs> in other words, my provision. Verse 6. Blessed am I when I come in. Blessed am I when I go out. The Lord will cause my enemies who rise against me to be defeated before my face. They shall come out against me one way and flee before me seven ways. The Lord has commanded the blessing on me in my storehouse and in all to which I set my hand. And he has blessed me in the land which the Lord my God has given me. My storehouse, you still remember the dispensary? Matthew chapter 4, when you go into your room, close the door, go to your storeroom, see what God has for you, and then you begin to release it through the words. Verse 9, the Lord has established me as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to me. As I keep the commandments of the Lord my God and walk in his ways, then all the peoples of the earth shall see that I am called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of me. And the Lord has granted me plenty of goods in the fruit of my body, in the increase of my livestock, in the produce of my ground, in the land which the Lord swore to my fathers to give me. In other words, what I own. Verse 12, The Lord has opened to me His good treasure, his depository, his storeroom. He has opened it, the heavens, and gives the rain to my land in its time, in its season, and has blessed all the work of my hand. I shall lend to many nations, but I shall not borrow. And the Lord has made me the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath, as I heed the commandments of the Lord my God, which He commands me today, and are careful to observe them. So I shall not turn aside from any of the words which He commanded me, which He commands me this day, to the right or to the left, to go after other gods. So I will not turn away from His words. Selah. Amen. I will not turn away from His words. I am no longer an alien from the commonwealth. I carry the blessings of Abraham upon me. And that's why it's called the weight of glory. Because it's something you carry. How weighty does it become? Where can I sow? It's too much. Who can I bless? It's too much. 
What can I do with it? It's too much. And when the people sow and give into the house of God, it becomes too much. And we begin to look and say, who's got a need? Who can we bless? Who can we take care of? Who can we help? That's what we do. Come on, close your Bibles. There we are at close your Bibles. And before we go to the communion table, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do something. So I want you to put down your Bibles and I want you to get on your feet. I want you to stand. The 7,500 people that have showed up here in my studio. And I want them to get the song ready for me. They're going to play it. And this is what we're going to do just for a moment. This is, the, this is the song. I'm going to tell you the song and then we're going to play it. This is what I've been walking around with in my spirit this whole week. Is, Lord, I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. Lord, I'm thirsty. Pour out your Holy Ghost. Now we know it has been poured out. But Lord, pour out your Holy Ghost. Lord, I want to see the hand of God working mightily inside of me. Lord, I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. Easy. Lord, I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. I want to see the hand of God pour out your spirit in such a way that our enemies will envy us because they see us Carry the weight of your glory, of your blessings, of your prosperity, of your provision, of your anointing upon us. Come. The musicians. Lord, I'm hungry. For a mighty move. There we go. Come on. Let's go with it. Lord, I'm thirsty. Pour out your Holy Ghost. Lord, I want to see the hand of God. Inside of me, I'm hungry for a move of God. Lord, I'm hungry. Come on now. Lord, Lord I'm, I'm hungry for a mighty move. For a mighty move of God. Lord, I'm thirsty for our sure Holy Ghost. Lord, I want to see the hand of God move mightily. Inside of me, I'm hungry for a move of God. Come on, Lord, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. No more the same. No more the same. There's got to be a change. We have to change. Open it. Pour out your Holy Ghost. Lord, I want to see the hand of God move mightily inside of me. I'm hungry for a move of God. Oh yes, Lord, I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. Lord, I'm thirsty. Pour out your holy ghost. Lord, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I want to see God move finally. For a move of God, Lord, I'm hungry. Oh, shema manoro dos ti berdi. Restu kurema nele bere basi panara mama. Nero mundo robo kureshe nere beete tenere beete. Mer nas ti berdi adara mashal nere beete. Musudu ba. Yere vali a songer. I am hungry for a mighty move of God. I'm hungry for a move of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Come on, while the music is playing, I want you to come there in your house, there in Portable. I want you to come to the front. Come and get your communion. Here in Mossel Bay, come and get your communion. Go back to your seat with it, and let's wait for one another. We're going to keep on playing it. 
inside of me I'm hungry Oh Lord, we are hungry for a move of God Lord, I'm hungry. And I want to see the hand of God inside of me. I'm hungry for a move. Lift your hands, sing. Lord, I want to see. Lord, I want to see the hand of God move mighty in me inside of me. I'm hungry. Come on, you can play it again. Lord, this is the cry of my heart. Lord, I'm hungry for a mighty move of God. No more the same. No more the same. No longer the same. I want to see a manifestation of your glory. Lord, I'm hungry. I want to see a manifestation of your glory. I want to see a manifestation of your provision, of your signs, wonders, miracles, and things. Pour out your Holy Ghost, Lord, I want to see. And Lord, this is the purpose why Jesus died. So that in Christ, the blessings of Abraham can now be upon us. Because he became a curse so that we can have life. Come on, I'm just giving everybody a chance to get your communion ready. While well, the song is still playing. And I pray that this song will echo in your spirit this week. It will resonate in your spirit this week. Lord, I'm hungry for a move of God. Right, when you're ready, you are welcome. Here's to life. Here's to abundant life. Here's to more than in, enough life. Here's to unexhaustible life. In Jesus' name. Let's go. Thank you, Jesus. Say this, Lord, I want to see the hand of God move mightily inside of me. Lord, I'm so hungry for a move of God. Thank you, Jesus. May there be a hunger in your life for the Word of God. I pray this morning, Father, creating us a hunger for your Word. That we will get into your word, search your word, read your word, fill ourselves up with your word, speak your word, declare your word, say what you say we are. I'm blessed. I'm prosperous. I can only be the head. I'm above only and not beneath. I'm the head only and not the tail. I'm blessed in the city, I'm blessed in the country because of the words that God spoke. I can be nothing but blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. I trust that you got something this morning. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Don't neglect the word. Get into the word this week. Watch your words. Be no, don't be careful. Watch your words. Say what he says. Declare what he declares. And his words will not return empty. And move from believing to knowing. 
That's called maturity. Move from believing to knowing. I believe God can do it. The Bible says the demons also believe and they tremble. I believe, Peter, I believe I can walk on the water. Peter, get out of the boat. He puts action to what he believes. Now he knows he can walk on water. He knows. Because he got out of the boat. Yes. 